Welcome to the first annual Silicon Valley Bikes Festival. I'm here with the Luxurious Bike Club, and we like to interview them and talk about bikes. How are you doing today? Pretty good, and yourself? Pretty good. Um, we're going to take some shots of your bike, but give us a description about your bike and the process you went through when you were building your bike. Well, I built my son's bike, and uh, me and my couple of friends got together. You know, I decided to build something for him to keep him out of trouble. Right. You know what I mean? Because I belong to the car club, and it's, so far it's kept me out of trouble. So I decided to build him a bike, and hopefully, you know, he can stay out of trouble just like I did. Right. You so know? technically the bike gives him a hobby. It's like a hobby, yes. A hobby to him, you know what I mean? Keep yes. him out of trouble and, and hang around with me at the shows, you know. So it's a family thing. That's it's all about family. This is a community event, so it's all about family. Uh, would you like to give us a little description about your bikes before we go and view them? Sure, no problem. Uh, my name is Miguel. Uh, these are my boys, uh, Anthony, Angel, and Ramon. Okay. Uh, all three of them have uh, lowrider bikes that we have here today at the show. Uh, they've all been built for the past 10 years, so we go way back building these bikes. And that same, same thing, same purpose. Uh, pretty much we build them so they keep them busy, showing a little bit of responsibility, going to shows, knowing that it, you know, it takes work, dedication, and also gives them an incentive to do good in school and you know, just give them positive motivation to do something right, you know? Definitely. Um, and now we're seeing how the community works together, but also how the family works together. talking with Chris. Chris is from Transform. Chris, tell us what you do. So we're a transportation advocacy organization that works to connect people to opportunity, address our climate uh, crisis, and also to uh, provide more affordable transportation options for Silicon Valley and the Bay Area. Okay. Um, bikes are a pretty inexpensive way to get to work. And um, I noticed behind me that we have a diagram. Could you talk to us about this diagram? Yeah, so you're right. Um, there's a, a few different options that folks have to get around in, in the South Bay, but um, I think most people uh, agree that we have a long way to go to really create a network that works for the majority of the population, right? Uh, and so that includes public transit, includes uh, bike routes, safe places to walk. And so what we've asked people today is to post up what areas would benefit from improved public transit access, from bike routes, and uh, just basically better transportation connectivity in the South Bay. And the reason is that BTA is gonna be uh, proposing a sales tax measure. They're gonna be uh, putting something on the ballot in 2016 with a package for us to vote on that'll generate somewhere in the ballpark of $3.8 billion for the future of transportation in Silicon Valley. And so we want to make sure that BTA knows what the community thinks as far as where these investments should take place, what kind of investments they should be thinking about. How would y'all want to incorporate this particular sport into the community? Uh, into the community? Well, um, boy, that's a good question. We're looking for the next generation. Yeah, we're definitely, we're always trying to bring in younger people, like teenagers, kids who are pushing, getting close to 18 because then they can sign their own waivers. But, you know, younger people, we're trying to work with the city to uh, get our courts built up in a way that it's semi-permanent so that, uh, you know, the the organization of San Jose can continue on. Uh, Bike Polo's been around for pushing 10 years now, and San Jose is only kind of scratch the surface on what we can do um, and that's that's kind of like one of our, our goals as an organization is to to get it so that it's you know going to perpetuate itself um, and, and bringing in younger people is, is kind of the way to do that so um, I guess uh, we'll probably do some more newbie nights and more events like this where people can kind of you know get a get a look at us and see what we do and realize it's not it's not that scary you know and if you know how to ride a bike you're halfway there and you know the rest of it you can kind of learn on your you know as you come out and play so what kind of bikes are you guys currently using for this sport uh, it's kind of, it's very DIY, um, I'm, actually this is a good example, I'm riding a 700C bike, which is just basically a track frame, we swap out the fork and we use these, uh, these wheels that have 48 spokes, um, and they're double walled deep V rims, so they're stronger, they can take a beating, you can see there's a bunch of dents in my rim, and then Jones is on a 26 inch bike, um, which is, you know, kind of the other option, um, and a lot of guys start off by using mountain bikes, and then they slowly modify them. And then uh, you can buy like custom bike polo frames, but they're a little bit more expensive and you got to kind of be like really serious about it to, you know, put the money in the one in. But I mean, you can have anything from like a $50 junker bike out there to, uh, you know, a guy at a $3,000 custom frame with custom everything. Um, you know, but, but the, the, the main idea is that you have a straight, straight fork and a tight wheelbase so that you can corner and turn and hop around and, and not have the, you know, kind of the flop where the good control. Good control yeah, it's all about being nimble and, and fast. 
So. This is uh, very good information. Sounds like a really good sport that um, you can start people out young and something that they could grow into. Absolutely. Thank you very much for interviewing with Create TV. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And we're talking to Matthew. Matthew is a part of the Goosenecks, and the competition has been very, very stiff. From new school bikes all the way down to vintage bikes. He's also a part of a bike club. Matthew, tell us about your bike club. Well, actually, I'm not part of a bike club. I'm actually uh, an owner of a bicycle shop, uh, which is called Gooseneck Bicycles. We also have a Gooseneck magazine. You can follow us on uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatnot. Um, but I also grew up uh, in a bike club uh, called Luxurious Sounds Like Lowriders, which is actual car club. And then as kids, we grew up and we started doing lowrider bikes. This is actually one of my original bikes. My buddy Joe that I grew up with, his bike's actually part of the exhibit of the History Park. Uh, but both of us started in the very early 90s and we've always been competing in the custom culture shows uh, with lowrider, with our lowrider bikes that we both built with each other and with our parents. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how we started in the early 90s as kids. Matthew is one of the judges here, and there's so many categories, so many different kinds of bikes. How hard was it to judge this? You know, it's always really hard to judge the bike because there's so many beautiful bikes. There's so much great talent. You know, a lot of people put a lot of heart and soul into them. We know because we were there, you know, but um, it's very hard. You know, uh, we want everybody to win. To us, everybody is a winner, but we, you know, when it comes down to it, we got to pick one. And... Um, you know, that's what the, it all boils down to. But like I said, to us, everybody's winners. But uh, it is very hard. Okay. It is very hard. Are you the owner of this particular bike? This is my original bike. Um, a lot of the parts that we got here is, was from one of the shops here in San Jose, which is Favors uh, Cyclery, which is no longer uh, the bicycle shop. But a lot of my parts came from there. My grandfather helped me build it. This was my original bike. Is my original bike from Luxurious uh, Bike Club. Uh, we started building this one in around 91. Give us a few details about your bike. Uh, it started off as an original Schwinn bike that we landed up modifying. Uh, we welded some plates, the body work, uh, the custom forks. The forks and the bike, uh, majority of it came from a guy that I bought it from um, as a kid, uh, but he built it with his dad in the 70s. So like the forks is something that was something that his dad and him built in the 70s. Um, but basically, you know, with this kind, with this bike, it's just something that I didn't want to do it so I could win. It was just more my personal style, um, and that's the way I think it always should be. It shouldn't be to always please like the judges. It should be something that you enjoy to do. That's always my thought, but that's what I, how I built this bike. Okay. Is what I want and how I like it. Okay. Being that you own a bicycle shop, how would you say this bike reflects your personality? Uh, well, this just shows where my grassroots are. You know, I grew up in a, you know, on the east side of San Jose, so my grassroots, you know, has always been the custom culture of stuff. It's always been with the lowrider bikes, the hot rods, the motorcycles, airplanes. You know, it didn't really matter, but it was always that custom culture of it all. And uh, this really reflects to what I did then. It reflected to me making my own frames um, and starting my own business. I mean, it's, you know, coming from that side of it, making, making my own stuff, basically. From people seeing this growing up, people wanted it. So we started making our own stuff for other people. That's how we started our business, basically. Here we're talking with Cycles of Hope. Mark, tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, Cycles of Hope is a uh, bicycle program we uh, work with. We are Hope Services. And this is our 10th year uh, with this program. What we do is we get bicycles from the community, various sources. And we uh, train our clients to do uh, simple repairs. And then after the bike is uh, thoroughly uh, refurbished, we uh, sell them to the public. No, our, our clients, uh, they're, they're employed in our workshop and we have different projects and uh, projects that come from outside, uh, simple production, simple assembly, and this is just an ongoing job no matter what happens. Well, I, I work with Mark and uh, we actually work with disabled people and originally this was formed to help them learn skills to hopefully get a job out in the community. Yeah. So, um, as far as community-based services, how many people would you say come to your workshops? 
Uh, we, at our workshop specifically, we have about 118 clients, and that's in our Santa Clara office okay. where our bike shop is located. Okay. How many offices do you have? Uh, I think it's seven or eight yeah. offices. They're throughout the, uh, throughout the Bay Area here, Silicon Valley. And we have, um, I think it's around 750 clients that we work for. Community should, should be clapping their hands. They, you really get involved, you get a chance to uh, learn kind of like a trade to some degree. Uh -huh. exactly. and, and people um, such as different individuals that, yes. that come through, I mean, it, it really gets them involved in something and makes them be productive for the community. Yeah, it, it builds self-esteem. Uh, because when the, you know, our, our folks, when they put the bike together and it's ready to go on sale and a customer comes by and then they, they purchase the bike, our clients see the work and it's like, my God, I actually worked on this bike and someone's buying my, my work. So it's, it does wonders. Right. So, so some, to some degree, there's an emotional attachment when you make a sale. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Do y'all have any other information that you'd like to get out to the public? Well, we're currently in need of volunteers. <laughs> So if uh, anyone out there uh, knows how to work on bicycles, experience is great. Uh, can just give us a phone call. Our phone uh, number is 408-562-1836. Leave a message and we'll get back with you because uh, we have quite a few bikes and we need people to help. We have a repair crew, but we're getting a little overwhelmed. I'm here with Mr. Tony Richardello. We are at the Silicon Valley Bikes event today, and he's gonna tell me a little bit about his wonderful bike. So while we're finishing up the raffle, as in, the uh, it's the it's history a, about your bike. I built it about five years ago. It's a two-seater, independent pedaling. It has a three-horse motor on the back. It's got about 500 miles on it. Why is it important for the community to come to events like this one? And why do you think San Jose and Santa Clara uh, should do more events like this one? Brings people together. All the different types of bikes. There's every kind of bike you can think of here. You know, from something like this to the, the classic antique bikes in the early 1900s. And you got the regular road bikes. It just brings everybody together, to, you know, this way they learn more people that don't ride bikes. I'm here with Carlos Velasquez. He's a member of the Silicon Valley um, Bikes and he is one of the sponsors of today's event. Tell me a little bit about your nonprofit organization. Yeah, uh, well, the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition has been around for 30 plus years. Uh, we try to get more people on bikes. Uh, we're based here in San Jose, but we uh, fo focus on making uh, bicycling better, safer, and accessible for people that live here in Santa Clara and San Mateo counties. So we, we work in the schools, we try to do workshops to try to get to make kids uh, understand how to ride their bikes safely. Uh, we work with some of the, a lot of the big cities here in San Jose in, in the area to uh, try to make bigger bike lanes and make it safe for people to get around town. So why do you think people should, should join events like this one and should join a um, non-profit organization like yours? Well, you know, I just uh, actually for someone that works for the for the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition, I'm still new to bicycle riding my bicycle. I've always been kind of afraid of riding around on the streets, uh, but just in the in the few weeks that I've already been here, I've learned so much about how to be safe on riding on the streets, and I've had a lot more confidence. It makes it's very good exercise, and it. Um, it's just so refreshing to see the city in another way. So I hope people can learn more about us so they can learn how to be safe and ride their bike, take care of their bike, and uh, just see how much uh, having a bicycle gives them a lot more freedom. Well, I myself, has, I had an accident in a bicycle. How, can, what can you tell to the people that are afraid, as you said, and are afraid of riding their bicycles because they can have an accident too? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times, uh, I mean, you see it on the road, you see it every day. Uh, I've, I've been seeing it, people ride on the wrong side of the street. It's very important that people ride 
along with traffic. It prevents so much injuries. Uh, that's really one of the biggest causes for bike injuries. People ride in the wrong way. People think that they might feel safer looking at the cars, but it's actually more dangerous. Actually also riding on sidewalks is also very dangerous. You're very close to cars that are coming out. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of safe bicycling practices that people can check our website and follow us and check out some of the workshops. I'm here with Dave. Dave, tell us about your bike. My bike was here was built by the cruiser shop by Dominic Guida. My pinstripe was done by Lunata Customs. That's a full custom. I love to ride my bike. I love to ride my bike with my, uh, my club called Crew the Cruiser, and we live up to the name. Okay. Uh, what kind of frame is this on this bike? This bike here, the frame here is a Rough Tangle Cycles, made out of Germany. Okay, so it's, it's a German design. German design, I think it is. I don't know about the whole thing, but I love the design itself. The wheels are from uh, from the cruiser shop. Okay. I, so those, those are custom wheels. Okay, what size are they? Uh, 26 by 4 in the rear. You got 26, 26 inch by, tires on a bike. 26 inch diameter, 4 inch wide in the rear. That's good stuff. 26 by 3 in the front. Okay. Custom felt hub. I modified the hub, turned okay. it into a 72 spoke and put in press seal bearings through the guidance of uh, Dominic Guida from the Cruiser Shop. This, this whole bike right here, this whole setup, it comes from the Cruiser Shop out of camp. Here with this guy who has a beautiful team, the team is called Eternal Rascus. So tell me a little bit about your team and tell me how you build your bike. Uh, we we're based out of Modesto, California, and uh, we've been together for like two, three years. Uh, we just like to ride and have fun. We're, we like to get the family involved and get them out. How many bikes do you own and how many of them have you built yourself? I own three bikes that are mine and then I've built anywhere from 10 to 20 bikes. Tell me a little bit about this one specifically that you're sitting on. There's a, Greg Roth Customs and uh, powder coated. Uh, I don't know. Comes with gears and everything, so it's fun to ride. And then tell me, why do you think this event is so important to your family, specifically for your team? And why do you think the community should come to events like this one? I, I basically do it because of the kids trying to get them to do something other than just sit at home and watch video games or play. Play video games and watch TV. So I like to get my kids involved. In. So you think it's a healthy like event for your kids and for the community yeah. to come? It's it's good for them to learn that there's other things to do rather than just sit at home. I'm here with Mr. Robert. He is the owner and president of the. Cruiser Mob team in Silicon Valley, right? Uh, we're based out of the East Bay, but we have a chapter starting here in San Jose as well. So tell me a little bit when you created or when you guys created this club and tell me more about the history of the club. Uh, the Cruiser Mob was created uh, about six years ago. It's a family oriented club. Uh, we just started out doing family rides uh, with, with friends and family and it, and it turned out to be in this crazy thing that we're into now dropping a lot of money on bicycles but it's it's fun it's it's it's, it's a great time so how many bicycles do you own uh, I personally own four uh, but uh, all the bikes you see here are all club member bikes and we help each other out with builds and uh, do a lot of family orientated things we also uh, raise a lot of money for the American Cancer Society uh, do a lot of family orientated uh, group events uh, with, within the community and how many members are in your club? Uh, currently now we have, I believe, 22 patched members. Uh, but like I said, we have a chapter starting here in uh, San Jose. We have a chapter in Fresno and one and also in Sacramento. So all of them are family members? All of them. Well, they're not blood related, but as as you're in the club, you're definitely considered family. And we, we, and we definitely help each other out in that aspect. 
So can people that are watching uh, join your club or maybe can you help them if they want to have something like you have? Sure, uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, it's it's Cruiser Mob. It's spelled spells a little differently, so it's spelled K-R-U-Z-3-R-M-O-B. You can find us on Facebook. We do rides uh, once a month. We post all of our stuff there. Uh, everyone is definitely welcome, uh, custom bike or not. If you got two wheels and it's turning, you're definitely welcome to come out. So tell me a little bit about this one. How expensive was it to uh, build it? <laughs> uh, this one is a, uh, a Matt Rodriguez uh, build. Uh, Matt Rodriguez has been in the uh, bicycle game for a long time, uh, especially out here in San Jose. Uh, started out with uh, uh, Shorty Fats. Uh, people from San Jose, I'm sure you guys know who Shorty Fats are. Shorty Fats, he, uh, he then moved into Pops Fabrication, now has a shop in Fremont called Gooseneck Bicycles. Uh, this is a, definitely a creation of, of him and myself getting together, collaborating um, as far as the club Cruiser Mob and Gooseneck Bicycles. But this is Matt Rodriguez right here. He, um, he built it, he bent it, he welded it, everything on this bike uh, he definitely touched. Um, but it was a, it, it definitely was a, a collaboration between the two. And we're talking to Drew. Drew, it's all about flair and it's all about fun when it comes to bikes. Tell us about your your bike. Well, it's a Rat Finks do over. Um, so pretty much I did the paint job on this. I had a buddy of mine named Rich Luna do the silver leaf and the pinstripe on it. And I got a three inch rear by 24. And then uh, just pretty much, you know, it's slam, um, made to ride, but then still again, look good. Would you say that uh, this bike festival crosses many cultures and, and the participation is really, really good for this type of event? Oh yes, this is very family oriented. You know, you bring your kids to this event. Um, at the same time, you know, adults are still involved. But yeah, very much still, you know, you got the flash, you got everybody's, you know, involvement in it. Okay, what, what color is this bike? It's a transparent raspberry. That's different, and that is yeah. nice. I like that. So would it be considered a, uh, uh, a classic style or a vintage style frame? What kind of frame is it? Uh, I would say a uh, new school look, because okay. I took the old school Rat Finks look okay. and then turned it out to a new, st new okay. school. All right. Um, I did an interview with an old school bike, and they had velvet on the seat. What kind of seat do you have? Oh, that's actually just an old school dyno seat. That's usually what I use to ride. But uh, when I do put it on it in shows, okay. I have a, a vintage um, banana seat. Okay. All right. So, so basically, you can trade out parts to it to make the bike look a little bit more advanced. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. How big? How big are the tires on here? That's a 24 by 3 inch wide. Adolfo, he's been bicycling for two years, so how do you like it and why do you decided to get it started? Um, I started biking because I love the community. It's a really good community. I mean, everyone's safe, everyone gathers, such as today, where we're all gathered around here and enjoying the day. What do you guys normally do when you go out biking? Uh, we try to go as a group and we try to have as much fun as we can. Uh, we know that San Jose is a bike-friendly city and we enjoy riding. Why do you think the community should join clubs like yours? Uh, I feel like even if you don't bike, um, you can still have a good time around here. Like there's a lot of people out here that like to bike or don't ride as much, but if the community were able to get along together, it, I think the whole community would really enjoy it. And it also makes you a lot fit and healthy, right? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your bike. Uh, this is a track bike that I use for the San Jose Hellier um, Velodrome. Uh, it's, it has no brakes, but I only use this bike at the Velodrome. And I try to, well, I mostly use it there so the community feels safe about uh, riders with no brakes not getting hit. Yeah. How many bikes do you have? I have three. You have three? What is this one? So what makes this one so special to you? Uh, I currently race a lot at the Velodrome and I place third and second in Nor NorCal. So I really love this bike, especially the other two. So 
tell us what are the plans of the San Jose Bicycling Club for next year or maybe this year? Uh, we want to expand, get the community, community involved and see if we can uh, come out together and have some fun racing. Daniel, Mr. Daniel, who just won two categories, how do you feel about that? Oh, I feel fantastic, it's, it's great. So tell me a little bit about your team and when do you get it started? Uh, actually, I'm just starting it now and uh, the, my name on my new club is called the Street Bombers and um, I'm just, like I said, getting started with it, so it's a new club. So what category is this one won? This one is the uh, best theme bike, which is the MP bike, a military bike. Uh, I've been working on this bike for five years, and this is the third look for this bike already. And this one? This one is my road bike, and its category was the cargo bike. And I've also been working on this one for a few years, but it's the original look that I had for this bike. So how many bikes do you actually own? I own three. Three? Yes. And what are the, the events that your team is planning for this year or maybe next year? I'm just going to all the bike shows, uh, bike party, uh, the next bike show coming up of course, and all of the bike runs that we can make during the week and, and on weekends. And why do you recommend people to come to events like this one? Uh, because they're a lot of fun and you get to see different bikes, different styles of bikes and just bikes from all over the place that are just crazy. And finally, if people want to join your club, can they do it? Or is it just a family club? No, no, they, they can join me. I'm on, I'm on Facebook. They can just look me up and we can join. We can meet on a run, on a, you know, on a bike party or whatever, and just go from there. Here with Mr. Mark, and he's going to tell me a little bit about the experience and the history of his bike. Um, this one is actually a reproduction. It's a modern bike built off of a bike from um, the late 1880s. Um, this one's only about a year old, but I've got six or 700 miles on it at this point. I've ridden it all over the area, Santa Cruz, San Francisco, Yosemite, everywhere pretty much. So by just looking at your bike, I see that it's a little bit hard to like maybe ride it. Is it that hard? Um, it's different, but it's not hard to ride it. It's It just takes a little getting used to, um, a little bit to get comfortable on it, and then it's just like riding any other bike. How do you fall from it? Yeah, it does hurt. Um, I've fallen, I think, a couple times. Both of them were due to traffic stopping in front of me and nowhere to go.